Hi everyone, so I've been gone for about three weeks, haven't really made a video because um, something happened that basically has been consuming our time a little bit and I wasn't sure whether I wanted to make a video on it or not. I know that there's going to be probably some backlash or some comments about it and against us, but I thought that even if that happens, then we still kind of uh, show or give awareness around what went happened so that maybe it can be avoided for other people. Um, so January is supposed to be National Bath Safety Awareness Month and the first week of February is also Burn Awareness. So that kind of ties into what happened and why I'm making this video and posting it. Um, <clears throat> so Eli typically likes to play with water any water anywhere he likes to play with it so he was playing um, in or trying to play in the sink for a long time around the time when we have bear who can't wipe his own bum when he goes to the bathroom so we try and close the doors to keep him out because Eli would climb up the stool turn on the taps and try and play with the water which would make a huge mess and it was a pain in the butt but we didn't think too much of it um, however there was one day where I was waiting our room is kind of connected Jack and Jill style with the bathroom that's in the house uh, upstairs is on the other side is the hallway and then on the this side of the bathroom is our bedroom so I was waiting in the bedroom for Bear to call me to wipe his butt because I knew that he was in there and knew that it would need to be done so while I was waiting in just on the other side of the door um, <clears throat> Eli basically went into the bathroom and turned on the hot water. So Eli went into the bathroom, climbed up on the stool, turned on the hot water, slipped into the sink, and got stuck. We live in an old house and the taps have it where you can turn the hot and the cold on independently. So Eli had only turned on the hot tap and not the cold and didn't understand what was going on. So it basically entirely cupped him and I guess just the water covering his sleeper weighed him down so he couldn't get out. When I heard him, I went in there and obviously grabbed him out, took off his clothes and his diaper and tried to cool him, him down a bit or get basically the hot stuff off. And then kind of called Dustin in a panic to figure out what we should do. We live about five to 10 minutes from the hospital, so whether we should be calling an ambulance or whether we should be bringing him in. Um, he was obviously in a lot of pain because he was screaming, and when I looked about three to four minutes after I took him out of the sink, the skin on his legs was coming off. So I, um, kind of went into protective mode at that point and um, told the kids to just get ready and get in the van and gave him some Tylenol and we zipped to the hospital. Um, again, it was about five to ten minutes away so it didn't take a whole lot of time to get there but just having to put him in his car seat was definitely not one of the funnest things to do. So at that point I was pretty much keeping things together after just going into protective mode and grabbing him out and taking his clothes off and giving him medicine and calling Dustin and then getting everybody there. And then my friend saw me outside of the hospital and asked me if I was okay. And I pretty much broke down. I couldn't even tell the nurses when I got there what was wrong. I just showed them and they whisked him off into a room and tried to cool them down and or cool the burns down and try to make them feel better but he's you know he doesn't understand and he doesn't want to be taken away from me so they can't put him in a cool bath they did give him Advil and morphine which did help but obviously he was still in pain and still really scared and didn't know what was going on so at that point um, Dustin was almost at the hospital and the kids were kind of just in the waiting room with my friend who was there. 
and she was just watching them and making sure that they didn't have to be in the room while he was crying and uh, then the doctor looked at him and kind of decided that they were probably first maybe severe, maybe severe enough to be second degree burns and um, we ended up just wrapping them up with a whole bunch of polysporin um, and yeah they, they pretty much wrapped it up and then told us that we would have to come back every day until it healed in order to change the bandages. So when we went back the next day to change the bandages, we found out that they didn't have the correct phone number for me on file and we were supposed to go see a plastic surgeon the next day. So that's kind of where things, we knew it was pretty bad, but when they start sending your toddler to a plastic surgeon, you know that it's really, really bad. So we ended up bringing him in the next day and have been bringing him in once a week ever since to get his bandages changed. It's slowly getting better, but it's been three weeks and one, the one that, the small blister that was on his right thigh has fully healed at this point, but he's still wearing bandages on his foot and his left thigh. Uh, he has been kind of reacting really well to it. He was pretty much up and walking around the next day. Although, um, for the first 24 or 48 hours, he was getting um, alternating doses of the Tylenol and the Motrin to kind of keep the pain at bay because I know that a lot of us have had burns before and they suck and they hurt for a long time and his were pretty bad. So, um, at this point, like I said, they're healing and getting better. It's been three weeks. He, the one that's on his left thigh was the worst and um, it's still not fully healed. It has lots of scabbing, but uh, like apparently he shouldn't need anything done like skin grafting. He may have scarring there. So um, right now it's just kind of a wait and see. So take this as a bit of a public service announcement, a warning, whatever you like to go and change the heat settings on your hot water tank if you haven't already. Even if you have taps that mix when you add them together, when you add the water, um, there's still a potential for burns if the water is too hot. I know that a lot of us feel more comfortable when we're washing our dishes and things like that with hot water, but obviously our children's health and well-being is way more important than make sure that you're on top of your partners too if they don't necessarily agree with you and on safety issues you can be more proactive. I know that I could have been. I don't feel comfortable with messing around with furnaces and hot water heaters but I really should have rather than just relying on um, my husband to do it for me and yeah. So please be kind if you leave any comments. Um, if you're gonna be a jerk I'll probably delete them. Um, but yeah. Like I said, I know that there's probably going to be a few like that just because something did happen, which is preventable, but accidents happen all the time, which suck. And um, I'd rather maybe be able to help somebody else avoid this than have to deal with somebody out there who's a jerk. So.